It's the 18th of May. On the advice of Dr. Rhonda Patrick and Hulk Hogan, I've taken my vitamins. And this is your Monday Microdose. All right, all you little Hulkamaniacs. I had um, a plan for what I was going to do today. But at some point yesterday, I I think I had some sort of break, <laughs> a mental break. And uh, so I'm going to beg your indulgence. Um, you know, the lockdowns are tapering, at least here, and I think in a lot of places. But, you know, I, ca- I talked to a couple of different people yesterday one online and one actually in person. And I made the comment that, uh, or, or I guess they made the comment, that things are getting um, a little spicy out there. And my comment was that we were all in this together for about a total of five minutes. And then it devolved into the thing that it always devolves into, which is just another reason to signal your allegiance to some ideology or political belief, and it is exhausting. It's tedious and exhausting. So with your permission, I'd like to tell you a little story today. Uh, Once upon a time, as a lot of you know, I owned a much larger bike shop, and I was a track dealer. Makers of fine bicycles. Um, and at some point, they uh, kind of followed specialized plan and wanted to come up with their own kind of fit system for bicycles. And they enlisted the help of a guy by the name of uh, Michael Sylvester. Now, Michael Sylvester was, and probably still is, a pretty well-known bike fitter. As well-known as a bike fitter can be. And I had heard the story about Michael Sylvester, and and I, I didn't have any reason to believe that it wasn't true, but... Uh, I had the opportunity to do some training with him in Nashville, Tennessee. What up, Nashville? And I wanted to ask him if this story was true. And when I asked him, he kind of smiled and said, well, we're going to, when we go back in, we're going to have a a chance for Q&A. Ask me the question then. And I said, sure. Sure. The, the end of this is that he did corroborate the story. So here's the, how the story goes. Michael's working for Trek, and he lives in Portland. And he gets a call from John Burke, who's the president of Trek Bicycles. And it was a f- Friday or Saturday or something like that. And he says, uh, John says, Michael, what are you doing tomorrow? I think meaning Sunday. And Michael's response was, well, you know, I work for you, John. You tell me what I'm doing tomorrow. And he goes, I've got a, we've got a plane booked for you, and you're going to Washington. That was all the information he, he, that he had. So he pitched up at the airport, and he got on the plane, and he went to Washington. And it wasn't until after, it was either when he got on the plane or when he got to Washington, either way, that they finally told him, you're going to do a bike fit for the president, who at the time was George W. Bush, Bush 43. Um, and, you know, in, in Michael's own words, he goes, look, you know, I, I'm from Portland. I mean, it's not exactly a bastion of conservatism, and I certainly didn't vote for the man. But this is my job, and this is what I'm going to do. So he gets to the White House, and he meets with one of the staffers who tells him, okay, you've got 20 minutes. Now, 
you don't have to know a lot about bike fitting to know that you're not going to get a bike fit done in 20 minutes. But, you know, okay. So the, the president comes out, and by all accounts, he is as warm and gracious as the stories would lead you to believe that he is. Michael gets a tour of the White House, including the private quarters, the living quarters, and they go about starting this bike fit. Now, George W. Bush, it was well known to at least most of us in the industry that he was a mountain biker. And um, I think John Burke was on the President's Council for fit, uh, Physical Fitness. So, you know, President Bush had a Trek mountain bike. And there were some mountain bike trails kind of adjacent to the Secret Service Training Center. I think this is all pretty well known. And it was also well known that he would go out there and just run these Secret Service guys ragged. And just think about that for a minute, that you can't go anywhere, including on a bike ride, on private grounds, that no one, I mean, even really knows that it's there, much less has access to without Secret Service protection. That's just a little aside. So they commence to, you know, with this bike fit. And, you know, the he's got the President of the United States riding circles on the lawn of the White House. And this is like two hours later. Uh, another little side note to the story is that Michael at one point looked up at the roof, uh, the roofs of a couple of the buildings and saw men uh, with rifles. And probably quite naively asks one of the staffers, you know, why, why those men with rifles are up there. And, uh, you know, I think the, the staffer kind of sheepish, sheepishly, you know, looked at Michael and, and said, well, Michael, they're there for you. Meaning if you do anything squirrely, eh. Which, again, understandable. So the bike fit is finished, and uh, this is where my memory gets a little fuzzy, but I think they actually went for a ride after that. Like, they got Michael a bike, and they loaded up the family truckster and, you know, went out to these trails and went for a mountain bike ride. After it's all said and done, they're both sitting under a tree somewhere on the grounds of the White House. I mean, this whole thing is just, you know, I don't care who's in office. Surreal. Crazy. You're sitting under a tree, having just gone for a mountain bike ride with the President of the United States. Mind-boggling. And they're talking. And I, I can't really recall what the, the, the question was or what they were talking about. But, you know, it was at the end of 43's second term. And just the amount of physical and mental and emotional stress, again, regardless of who's in office, that that job can put on you, you know, you, you really get to see how the sausage is made, and it ain't pretty. So as they're talking, at one point, the president looks at Michael and says, Michael... Politics sucks. I just want to ride my bike. 